Hello, this is Sky Moore. This segment is on completion guarantees. A completion guarantee is a contractual commitment by what's called a bond company, often called a completion guarantee company, to the financier of a film. And the undertaking says that the completion guarantee company, the bond company, guarantees that the film will be completed and delivered on time to distributors, therefore triggering their payments to the financier, or the completion guarantor company will pay the lender, the financier, the amount that they put into the film. It's an absolute key to every independent film that is ever financed. What does the bond company not cover? It doesn't cover funding up to the agreed budget. If that budget is $10 million, the bond company is not on the hook until the full $10 million has been invested into that film. The bond company basically is saying, if more money is needed, I will put it in to finish this film. But first, you have to put in the first $10 million. The bond company is also not liable for default by the distributors. Once that film is completed and delivered to the distributors, they don't pay. That's a problem between them and the lender or financier. That is not the bond company's problem. The bond company also is not liable for any defect in the rights. If for whatever reason the rights aren't valid, the copyright isn't good, the bond company is not liable for that. Generally, the bond company doesn't cover music, and generally it doesn't cover the MPAA ratings. Critically, the bond company is not guaranteeing the quality of the film. Studios don't use bond companies. The studios are the distributor, and the last thing they want is to get a lousy film. They will put whatever money is required to make it a quality film, rather than have somebody show up with just some piece of schlock that, that nobody wants. How does the bond company protect itself? What it does is it gets a takeover right against the director and producer. And what it says is, if that film is going behind schedule or over budget, then at that moment, the completion bond company can step in, push out the director and producer, and take over production of the film. And that is a very powerful weapon that the bond company holds in order to make sure that everybody behaves. And what you typically find is that everyone understands that the bond company, if they're forced to, will come in and finish that film at the lowest possible cost. Nobody wants that, not the producer, not the director, not the distributors, and, and in particular, the producer and director know that if there's a takeover, they will probably never get a bond again in their lifetime because that, their reputation will be ruined. So what you often have is what we call soft takeover. And a soft takeover is when the completion bond company comes in and makes suggestions and says to everybody, if you don't really behave or cut this scene or do this, we're going to take over, so why don't you do this and this? And everyone gets the message, and typically people start behaving because they, they know the dire consequences of a full takeover. Sometimes studios want to create a buffer between them and the director, and they don't want to be the one telling the director to cut a scene and they use a bond company almost cosmetically, and we call that a Swiss cheese bond because it's full of holes. It's a way to try to keep the director in check. What all of this puts pressure on is what is delivery. A bond company will always do whatever it takes to complete and deliver the film on time. And so what they will do in turn is turn to the distributors and, si and say, I want you to sign a separate document with me acknowledging what delivery is. And in a perfect world, the bond company simply wants delivery to be a piece of paper that says, the film is done. It's called a notice of delivery. Come and get it. And if distributors are dumb, they will actually agree to that, and that's delivery. If distributors are clever, they will negotiate this, and they will at least have the right to inspect the film elements and to object for technical defects. They won't be able to object for that, oh, I, I really don't like it as much, it, I don't think it's a wonderful film, but they could object if it's scratchy or cutting or intermittent, some kind of technical defect, and usually there's the right to arbitrate disputes. So what you find in a well-negotiated agreement that delivery will have those aspects of right to inspect, right to object for technical grounds, and arbitration of disputes, 
and, and delivery will ultimately be decided then by the arbitrator award that delivery has occurred or that, it, or that it hasn't occurred. It's often called a notice of assignment because as part of that the distributor is agreeing to assign their payment directly to the lender. What are the bond fees? Bond fees are typically 2 to 3 percent of the budget, sometimes a rebate if no call has been made on the bond company. And that is a cost that gets added to the film. It goes in what's called the, the other category. I've discussed the budget in a separate segment. So that's an overview of how bond companies work. This is Sky Moore tuning off on this segment. Hope you join me for the next one.